I invite you to turn to Matthew 26. <coughs> sad and began to say to him one after the other, surely not I, Lord. Jesus replied, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will be training. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus answered, yes, it is you. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is put out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. As Jesus had been going about his life with the disciples, he's tried on several occasions to explain to them that when he got to Jerusalem, he would be handed over to the authorities and he'd be crucified for the sins of the world. He really tried hard to communicate this to the disciples. But this news is either not what the disciples really wanted to hear, or they really didn't understand what he was saying. They're following a guy who's going to go to town and going to be crucified. And in the Old Testament, there was the law. And in the law, there was, was a way for the high priest to make atonement for the sins of the people. That's how it was done. It required the shedding of blood. And people knew how to do that. They knew all about the law, all about the covenant. But Jesus is up to something new. He's talking about something different. He's talking about dying in Jerusalem. He's talking about the temple being destroyed. And him rebuilding it in three days. Now, obviously, they know he's not some expert builder. Some powerhouse that can, they can, they can blow the temple up and build it in three days. You can't build a temple in three days. That just can't happen. And it confuses people. Even the disciples got confused when he started talking about dying. And finally, Jesus, there, there comes a time, no matter how hard you try to explain something to somebody, there comes a time they just have to see it play out. And we know that after it all played out, they all understood. But finally, Jesus sends the disciples ahead. Go make preparations to celebrate Passover. I want to celebrate this with you guys, he says. Go make preparations. Now, the Passover, they celebrated it every year, kind of like Christmas for them. They celebrated Passover, and, and they celebrated when they remember how they were delivered out of bondage in Egypt. So it was a memorable story. I, I love even seeing it in the movies. You know, just, just <laughs> how it just feels really good watching, them, watching all these people come out of Egypt. And Jesus wants to celebrate this with his disciples. And as they gather for the meeting, he tells them that one of you guys is going to betray me. Well, that's not what they wanted to hear. And naturally, they're all pretty sad. And they begin to wonder, oh, is it me? You know, is it me? I wonder who it is. You ever been in a classroom and the teacher comes in and says, one of you is in trouble? And you're all sitting there going, oh. you know, or somebody says, hey, there's only one A on this test. And you're like, oh. Pretty sure it wasn't me. But, but hey, hey, one, one of you failed this test. You're like, you know, uh, uh, why don't you betray me? And they're all wondering, could I be the one? Is it me? What, what did I do? Nobody wants to be that guy. You know, that, that guy, that one guy. Don't be that guy. Including Judas, who, who, who says, surely not I, Rabbi. Can't be me. You see, Judas worked out a deal with the chief priest earlier. Back in verse 14. And he probably didn't think he was betraying Jesus. Because you see, in Judas' mind, in Judas' mind, he felt like he was doing Jesus a favor by working on this deal to arrange a meeting between Jesus and the high priest. He was going to bring the, the people out to Jesus, and that would give Jesus an opportunity to share his message with them. Judas thought he was helping Jesus out. Oh, but he wasn't. He wasn't at all. And Jesus' response kind of seals the deal. He says, yes, it's you. That moment 
the, the, the low blood blood blood, what Judas must have felt in that moment, which was, what did I do? Because what he had done, it was too late to undo. There was no, hey, wait, guys, never mind. He's already had the money. He was, he was, yeah, he, it, it was, the, the deal was done. And then Jesus goes into something powerful. He takes the bread. He takes the bread that's to use the Passover meal. And he gives eggs, he breaks it, he gives it to the disciples. But that really, that part really isn't unusual. That's what happened in the Passover meal. But it's what Jesus says next that turns their heads. He says, take and eat. This is my body. Now, obviously, Jesus didn't take a piece of flesh he would eat. He took the bread. And he gave them, he said, this is my body. Now, imagine being in that room. What did this guy just say? That's his body? We're celebrating Passover here. Normally, Passover was celebrated by the head of the household, would go to the head of the table, which is where the head of the household would sit, and, and, and it would have, and, and we've done this with the kid, we do a set or something. It's the Passover where they sell, and, and the head of the household would describe what each piece of the meal was about. Except for when Jesus launches into it this time, he said, here's the bread, this is my body. Change it a little bit. He changed a little bit. They eat, they eat different things, too. They eat bitter herbs. Remember the bitterness and the bondage of Egypt. They eat unleavened bread made without yeast. It was never, do you remember how quickly they had to leave Egypt? You know, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. And Jesus doesn't go that direction, does he? Because all of a sudden, the exodus from Egypt isn't what matters most now to them. He is acting as the head of this household. And he's distributing the meal. He's describing each part. Just like the head of the household would do. And he's doing so with his disciples, demonstrating his authority as head of all of their households. Head of all of our households. You see, his body is going to be sacrificed for the forgiveness of the world. Now, it might be tough to swallow for them, but that's what Jesus is asking them to do. This bread is his body. Then he takes the cup. And he gives thanks and he offers it the same saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And as he shares this meal, he changes its meaning. And he draws the meaning to himself. No longer is this meal going to commemorate coming out of Egypt. Now it's going to commemorate coming out of sin. Which I said to the kids, it is rock as it was, stomped in mud for 400 years. It's worse stomping in sin. It's worse living in sin. And he offers a new direction. <laughs> now, this isn't anything man made that they're partaking in now. It's his body. It's his blood given for them. Not to them. You see the difference? For them. For the forgiveness of sin. As I said, it was, it was, a, it was a big time day when they came out of Egypt. This is better. This is better. What ha what's happening with Jesus isn't just one nation coming out of bondage. Witnessing a powerful miracle of the Red Sea, crossing the river on dry ground, and eventually going into the promised land through the river Jordan. This is a meal commemorating the sacrifice of God's only begotten Son for the sins of the world. And that boggles the mind that God, the God who made the universe, would come here, subjecting himself to the rivers of living here, to go through the agony of death on the cross just to save a bunch of sinners like us. Who would do that? No, we didn't deserve that. The well, last night they spent in Egypt, they spread the lamb's blood across the top of the doorpost and lamb. Remember? Not, not, not remember because you were there, but remember reading about it, hearing about it, maybe seeing it in the movie. And when the spirit of death came along, he passed over the houses who were under the blood. But now the blood of Jesus Christ is in the cup. And the disciples are told to drink it because this is his blood. Jesus says, pour out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus did a lot of new innovative things in his day, but this tops the charts. This is the new covenant. This is the, he, he is the sacrifice for the forgiveness of sin that will protect us from the spirit of death. Right? Because we're, we're, let's face it, we're all going to die. Sorry I have to break that to you. You know? <laughs> Our rage just went down. <laughs> but, but the gift of God is eternal life. You swear, but whoever believes in Jesus eats the body, drinks the blood, shall not perish, but are lost in life. Let me assure you, isn't it, isn't it as simple though as taking a piece of bread and a cup of juice? Anybody can mosey up here and pop a piece of bread and take a cup of juice. It's not that simple. 
if that's all that had to happen, then they were missing something here. We come to the altar knowing that the sacrifice has been made for our sin. We come in response to what Jesus Christ has done in shedding his blood for us. We come and we eat the body of Christ. We've taken his very life into our body so that we no longer walk according to our own way. And we say, Jesus, I am yours. Make me yours. Then his life flows through our body and we're able to share his life with others. This is the new covenant that God made in his people for all people for all time. We're the people of the new covenant. Jesus went on to say, and this is pretty cool. You've got to try to picture this. I will not drink of Jesus talking to himself where he will not drink of this fruit of mine from now on until they will he drinks it new with us in his father's kingdom. We're going to share this meal with him one day when we get there. For now, we're going to share it with each other. And until that day, we share. We share. And we so it's this, this is World Communion Sunday. I, 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 I'm guessing I'm only here. I'm guessing other parts of the world are celebrating communion too. And we're all celebrating the same thing. Yeah, we're not all taken from the exact same loaf or the exact same cup. But in Christ, it is the seed. It, it's his body. It's his blood. That piece of bread, that cup of juice is for us, the body and blood of Christ, until he comes. Until he comes in final victory. And we get to eat it again. But man, can you imagine how good that's going to be? Can you imagine how good that's going to be? I like food. Food's good. But the food that Jesus is going to serve? Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not real big on new food. <laughs> It's just, uh, uh, but I'm looking forward to this. And so uh, today, we don't put the blood on our doorpost and lentil food. We put the blood on our hearts. And then your great song goes, and I, I forgot to tell you this. We're going to sing a different song than what's in your bulletin. A great song that goes, There to my heart was the blood of blood. You know that song? Glory to his name. Let's pray. Father God, we pray, Lord, that your blood will be applied to our hearts. Just like the Israelites put it on their doorposts and love to protect them from the spirit of death, Lord, this morning we put it on our hearts. You told us to take and eat. Lord, and as we do so, we, we, we spread your blood on our hearts, Lord, saving us. Saving us from our sin, Lord, saving us from that time, Lord, whenever there's going to come a time, whenever death is going to be knocking at the door, Lord, we, uh, you're going to save us. You're going to be there for us, and you're going to... Uh, See the blood applied to our hearts. And we're going to enter glory, singing glory to your name. Lord, be with us, Lord, as we come and share this meal together in Jesus' name. Amen.